Well, I think Ivan works on both book and, and movie form because we humans have always transplanted our emotions onto animals. We think and feel that they think and feel as we do. It's, it's actually a very sweet, rather naive trait of human beings. And um, it's also very compassionate that we, we extend ourselves and empathize with characters. And if, and if animals are in um, a, a place of, of, of despair or um, danger, we feel that and we want to help that condition. And so um, it wasn't hard to get behind the sensibility of this story. And even though the animals in this story are not in despair, it's, there is a sense that they're longing for something more, something different in their lives. And it comes to fruition in the story, and it's really sweet. It's a great story. It's, it's well-constructed. It's uplifting. At the end, it's very, very hopeful and happy. But we take you through an emotional ride in order to earn that happiness at the end. So I hope you enjoy it. The One and Only Ivan is based on a book that is based on real life events. Um, a baby gorilla was rescued from Africa when his family was demolished by poachers. And at first, uh, it was taken in by a, a, a young couple in Tacoma, Washington. And um, it was novel and exciting and different, and they, it gave them attention because it was a baby in diapers. And, um, but eventually, you have to realize this is a gorilla. This is a wild animal. And a gorilla inside a, a domestic domesticated situation, it, it doesn't last long. It can't sustain. So their furniture was destroyed and the drapes and every, everything had to be super baby-proofed. And it just, it's just not possible. My character is Mac. Um, I play the main uh, live-action character in the movie. And I play opposite all of these other animals, primarily. Uh, these animals are created by actors in suits, or they are constructs and pieces of metal and wrapped in green. The main animal that, that Mac has and, and really feels a father-son relationship to is Ivan. And uh, since he had him, since he was a young, young baby gorilla, and now he's uh, 20, and then he I think he lived to be about 27 years old or something. Um, but uh, there are other animals. There's, um, there's Stella, who's a large elephant. There's a baby elephant named Ruby. There is a voracious rabbit named Murphy. There is a, a, a seal named Frankie, who continues to bounce a ball on his nose all the time. There is a, a chicken named Her Henrietta, and there's a, a show dog, Poodle, named Snickers. And so that is the menagerie that Mac puts up and, and actually has all of them perform in this littlest big top on earth. It is challenging to, to work with inanimate objects. When I'm looking at an elephant that's being pushed by two men in complete green suits and the trunk is moving like this and I have to <clears throat> imagine what that elephant is communicating without the use of, of a verbal language. Same thing with Ivan and all the others. <clears throat> um, it's, it's very different. It's, uh, but, uh, but the challenge is uh, exciting, actually. Well, I hope audiences when they see the one and only Ivan, we'll, we'll see what I felt. Um, and that is um, a, a compassion for animals, 
and the treatment of animals and the desire to to not only reach out and understand them better but understand ourselves better as well and how we treat each other is important and even though we don't speak the same language maybe that's the the story behind the story that there's other human beings where we don't speak the same language and we should have as much if not more compassion and understanding and acceptance and tolerance of them and their needs and their wants